captivity, we see stereotypic behaviours. And these are abnormal, repetitive behaviours that have no outwardly obvious function. So for example, staring at a concrete wall. Just that floating, and the calf is trying to nurse. Which can't nurse in that position. So I can imagine like a crying baby needing something from the mother, and the mother so depressed, Just incapable of taking care of her calf. We have no right to rob them of their life and put them in these tanks and disguise it as conservation when all it is is entertainment. The ocean covers 71% of Earth's surface. There are hundreds of thousands of species in the ocean, and of those, the orca is one of the most intelligent. However, since 1961, people began to capture them from their orca shells to make money. During the period from 1963 to 1973, a total of 262 orcas were captured. 75 were kept, 11 died during the capture, and 16 died within their first year. The rest escaped or were released. Currently, orca in the captivity have a lifespan of 20 years compared to a lifespan of 50 years to 80 years for those in the wild. Orcas are not treated just in the captivity. Harsh chemicals in the water such as the chlorine irritate the wild's skin and eyes. Orcas also think gas damages in cap captivity due to the narrow space. The streets of captivity cause them to grind their teeth as well. What is worse, orca captured in cramped space can develop the violence and the psychotic behavior. And breeding captured whales can pass on these dangerous trees. Recently, a, a trainer was killed by an aggravated orca, which inspired the making of documentary Blackfish. Despite the various forms of physical and mental harm that orcas experience in captivity, a majority of our sympathy for these mammals come from their humanistic behavior patterns in the wild. According to Lisa Stifler of Smithsonian Magazine, orcas have actually developed a complex culture. They adapt their culture from the other orcas they are surrounded by. When traveling in pods led by the older females, a specific set of behaviors is modeled for the younger mammals to imitate. This is very similar to the way us humans base our behavioral patterns on those of our parents. This adapted culture influences what and how they eat, what they do for fun, and even their choice in mates. The main way to identify cultural differences in orcas is through vocalizations, which vary from group to group. Dialects of orca vocalization depend on a variety of factors such as location and size of the pod. Food preferences are also distinct among orcas. Certain groups have specific preferences as to what they want to eat, and these preferences can be passed down to the next generations. Some orcas prefer Chinook salmon over any other salmon. Even in an abundance of pink or sockeye salmon, these orca will only hunt for the Chinook salmon. Transient orcas hunt seals and sea lions, whereas offshore orcas will hunt shark. Some pods of orca in British Columbia will come to rubbing beaches where they scrape their bodies along pebbles, whereas other pods won't even come near the shore. Some orcas spy hop for fun. This is when they bob up into the air to peek above the water. Some pods of orca participate in greeting ceremonies where they line up in two opposing rows and then tumble together. Orcas, like humans, depend on each other as a society and adhere to old traditions. Organizations such as SeaWorld, Marineland, and Loro Parque don't accept that whales should not be kept in captivity. They are adamant that whales in captivity help raise public awareness for the troubles that these animals face in the wild. Allowing the public the opportunity to connect with these animals, they argue, creates an emotional connection, particularly with children. This in turn helps to ensure that people care to preserve their marine protected areas. SeaWorld and other whale show organizations played a role in ensuring the survival of these animals by creating that emotional connection. However, Whale watching is an obvious mainstream and ethical alternative. Protecting whale pods should not come at the expense of their dignity or health. Whale populations are recovering internationally. People are becoming aware that whales are more than just two-dimensional showpieces. They have a diversity of language, dialects, cultures, traditions, and personalities with, that we are just beginning to understand. They are only deadly to humans when we keep them in captivity. They are only short-lived in captivity. Dental issues, aggression, depression, stress, dorsal collapse, and chlorine damage are all prominent among whales in captivity. These animals are not treated as dignified entertainers. They are slaves. 
They are starved to perform for food and separated from their children. They sometimes become violent, putting the lives of inexperienced trainers in jeopardy. They should not be treated as a commodity sold to the highest bidder. Do not support SeaWorld, Marineland, or any other business that profits from the captivity of these majestic animals. Baby beluga in the deep blue sea Swim so wild and you swim so free Heaven above and the sea below And a little white whale on the gold